Hello, brethren, sisters. Bow your head with me, please, if you will, in a little bit of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, my Father, I repent, Lord, of myself. I repent of my pride, my selfishness, my wickedness, and Lord, I am a sinner who is chief. Lord, thy will be done. And Lord, may you be glorified today. Lord, I am incapable of doing this. I cannot do this, Lord, unless thou, O Lord, art present here to speak to this congregation through these lips, through this worthless sinner that I am. Please give me the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge to hearken unto thee, that thou, Lord, may guide me and that you may be glorified, Lord, as we um, go through the scriptures today. And that you, Lord, may teach your body through I, a sinner who is chief. Please be with my mouth. Speak to this congregation, Lord. Your will be done. Hopefully this machine will not malfunction. Please guide me. Teach me, correct me, rebuke me, chase me. And also, Lord that the brethren who will hear this will have eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts, and that you may give them wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all skill and learning. Please feed us with the sincere milk of the word and wash us in your word. And thank you, Lord, for the blessings and your mercy unto the brethren. Thank you, merciful Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and the real scriptures. And turn into your King James scriptures to the book of John, chapter 15. Now, initially, I will, uh, and incidentally, if you have one of these, a ribbon marker, you might want to use it because this is going to be an expository video. Okay? I expect you to get the scriptures, get the book, and follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. We will be doing, like I said, an expository video here on John chapter 15, all 27 verses. What started out as originally to be an expository thing on just one verse, which um, deals with the Godhead, um, turned out to be an entire expository study of the entire chapter. Um, there are brethren out there who I'm sure will catch things that I miss and um, will hold me accountable, praise you, uh, praise the Lord. And um, so, like I said, um, you're going to need, if you have one of these, you're going to need it today because we are going to be looking at a whole bunch of scriptures today, working off of John chapter 15. Okay? Get the authorized version of the scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Follow me along. Don't just sit there on your duff. Get the book. Go in the scriptures. Okay? Got it? Okay? Um, if you got to pause it, pause it. Okay? So, John chapter 15. And as you can see, brethren, I have quite a bit of notes. This is one of two videos that, Lord willing, that will be done today. I have a question uh, that a brother asked me to answer. So, Enough. John chapter 15. We are going to begin with verses 1 and 2. John chapter 15 verses 1 and 2 to start. I am the vine, and I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. 
And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Very quickly, I am. If you got a pen and paper or something, or if you got a pen, circle it in the scriptures. If you don't want to circle anything in your set of scriptures, totally understand that. Hinge it though. The I am. I am. It's very important to note, especially in the book of John, the Lord is constantly saying things like, I am, I am, associating himself as God the Father. I am the true vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. The Father is the soul. Every branch in me that beareth not, I have that circled as well, fruit he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17. Know ye not that ye, circled, ye is plural, are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Okay? Go back now. I uh, to John 15 verses 1 and 2. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Go back now to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Abiding in him? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 20. 1 Corinthians 6, chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 15 on to verse 20. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Again, he's talking about physical fornication. But there, it's a little bit more deeper than just that. Let's continue. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, lowercase s, which are God's. John chapter 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not Fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. And right here now in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Of course, 2 Corinthians 
Now, chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Not Galatians, Brad. Second Corinthians chapter three. We're going to read this whole chapter. Can you handle that? Second Corinthians chapter three. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, that's a capital S, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables. Hold your place there. Again, John 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Go back now to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Continue on in, continuing on at verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of who? God. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Lowercase s. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Also, lowercase s, what God imparts. Notice, not of the letter, referring to the Old Testament law. That's what that means, okay? Verse 7. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, again, talking about the law, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And that is Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away, in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. Capital S. We went through all of that so you could get the context. Now the Lord is, circle that, that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. From glory to glory. The glory of man and of the flesh to the glory of living in the Spirit. Okay? The Lord is that Spirit. And Paul mentioned about how you didn't need 
letters of commendation from others that ye are our letters of commendation. Every uh, back in John 15, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. What we just looked at in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's continue now, verses 3 through 4. Now ye are clean through the word, lowercase w, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Abide in him. Now granted, this is before the crucifixion. Okay? This is pre-crucifixion. That is to be kept in mind. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Now you can, uh, on your own time if you wish, you could read how he makes the comparison between husband and wife and then compares that onto our Lord Jesus Christ, onto his bride, the church, of the living God, the body of Christ, okay? You're of, you are the bride of Christ. You're joined unto the Lord. What? Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost? The Lord lives in you, and the Lord is that spirit. Verse 26, one verse. Go ahead and read the context on your own time from 23 on to verse 33, but we're just going to hit one verse here. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Let's read verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. And it's not talking about a building, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Okay. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Okay? Now, go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Mem. Oh, excuse me. Psalm 119, verse 9. That's later. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 9, one verse. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Verse 3 in John 15 again. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Of course, John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Lord will come and clean up your life. But you know what, brethren? You have to stay in the scriptures. And you have to compare your life against the scriptures. And live your life in accordance to the scriptures. Now, granted, that's, you know, we struggle with that, don't we? Hi. This is our standard. This is our standard. The life that you live out there, in here, in your home, when no one but it's, when it's no one but just you and the Lord, how you live in, in accordance with the scriptures. Hmm? When it's just you and the Lord alone, wife's in bed. Put that in your pipe, huh? 
Now, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Come on, Brad. Come on. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, a lot of the modern Bible perversions, which come from the Roman Catholic Church, um, the Alexandrian texts, remove of the word. Fact check. As newborn, ba as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow, thy grow thereby. If, it's a big if, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. John 15, verse 3 again. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Philippians now, Philippians chapter 4, uh, you probably guess where I'm going right here with this one, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 13, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 13. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. <laughs> I'm getting there. How about you? How about you? I know both how to be abased. And I know how to abound. Everywhere and in some things I am instructed. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> Everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Acts chapter 17, one verse, again, Acts chapter, uh, chapter 17, verse 1, uh, verse, uh, Acts 17, one verse, read the context on your own time, okay? The context you can find from verse 22 on to verse 30. We are going to look at in Acts chapter 17, verse 28. Again, read the context on your own time. For in him, verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. And then it talks about making graven images of the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. Go ahead and read that yourself. Go ahead. Galatians now. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 20 and 21. Galatians chapter 2 verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Note the loved, past tense, and gave, past tense, himself for me. 
I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Verse 4 and John 15, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it by abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Abide. Staying with. Seeking thereunto. Colossians chapter 1. Verses 25 on to verse 29. Colossians chapter 1 verses 25 on to verse 29. Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, referring to the current dispensation that we are in, the time of the Gentiles. Because uh, in John 15 that we're uh, going through right now, that was before the crucifixion okay Christ paid for our sins on the cross he shed his blood died buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures it was the time of the Gentiles a new dispensation had begun the kingdom of God the spiritual kingdom was still being offered okay there is arguments that could be said that had the Jewish people accepted that then the kingdom of heaven could have come earlier, but it is prophesied that that would not be the case. But anyway, let's continue. Verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That doesn't mean sinlessly perfect. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Striving. Abiding. There are two different words. But you could argue the same principle. You can abide without striving. You can strive without abiding. Kind of like a hand-in-hand -hand thing, you know what I'm saying? Now, go back to John 15. We are going to be reading verses 5 on to 14. Five on to 14. I am, they said, I am, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. And we already looked at corresponding scriptures for the previous scriptures that verify that, especially for us today in the time of the Gentiles. Let's continue. If a man abide not in me, he is cast, cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now on that, go to Matthew very quickly, Matthew chapter 25. Okay, now we have to remember about Matthew 25. Okay, Matthew chapter 25 is the parable of the ten virgins okay but in 24 it is talking about the time of jacob's trouble okay so we have to remember that the 25 comes after chapter 24 doesn't it yeah yeah but look at this matthew chapter 25 verse 41 okay speaking of christ 
when he is within the millennial reign. Verse 41 in Matthew chapter 25. Then shall he say unto also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. You and I have no place in hell. But unfortunately, many are going there and are there as we speak. Unfortunately. See, that's significant, very significant, actually, because where he says here in verse 7, in verse 7, yes, <clears throat> if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If, not that if, ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. 1 John, I, I, I love this, 1 John 3, 16. <laughs> You're going to love this, 1 John 3, 16. Yes, I said, 1 John 3, 16. 1 John 3, 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. 1 John 3.16. Now, John 3.16. <laughs> John 3.16. For God so loved, just past tense, the world, that he gave, past tense, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is not the gospel for today in the time of the Gentiles. Okay? Believe in him. They could see him. King, the king was walking there around on the earth at that time, physically, in a body. Okay? The fullness of the Godhead bodily. The express image of his person. That doesn't mean that what Jesus Christ looks like is what God the Father looks like because there's two of them. No. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Don't worry. We're, we're, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, we'll, we'll get there. So just wait for it. Okay? Believeth in him. Believing in something is making a mental, um, making a mental thing onto known facts. Where believing on is trusting. Okay? Because during the millennial kingdom, it's faith and works. You well, excuse me, it's works. Beg your pardon, beg your pardon. Time in Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Beg your pardon, brethren, forgive me. During the millennial kingdom, it's works. Because Jesus is going to be ruling in Jerusalem upon the throne as son of David, king. And you won't need faith because you're going to be able to see him. Again, my bad, forgive me for that. It is works during the millennial kingdom. 
Okay? You get that? Yeah. Okay. Let's continue now. Verse 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now, go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, with what we have just read. 1 John chapter 2, we are going to be reading, and you'll check this out here a little, in a little bit. 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 14, we are intentionally going to skip verses 15 and 23, but we're going to look at those later. But then we are going to read from 24 on to 29. Okay, so 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 14. Okay, again, I hope you're using your river marker in John 15. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that are, we are in him. Okay? Now, what happens if you do not obey the scriptures? This is what the easy believism heretics like to harp on. You won't lose your salvation today. No, you will not. You are eternally secure today. Yes. But again, um, if you look at this book as just mere guidelines, just mere guidelines and not the faith and practice of your life, you're going to reap a very heavy consequence for that. Okay? And salvifically today. We do not have to keep the commandments in order to stay saved. No, we do not. Okay? We don't. Once you are truly saved and born again, you are truly saved and born again. Yes. Yes. You cannot become unsealed. And hey, those of you, my enemies, I have never, come on, come on, I have never argued against eternal security for this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? Give me a break. No, you are eternally secure. Let's see, if you do not live this word by faith and practice, <laughs> I know of a couple of you that, uh, yeah. Let's continue, okay? Verse 6 in First John chapter 2. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Now Paul talks about be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. Paul is our example to the Jew first and also to the Gentile as how we are to follow Christ in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Paul is our example to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. Boom. Okay? We got that. Okay? We got that? Do we get that? Yes? Okay. Let's continue. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. 
He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother. His brother. Not that. His brother. Is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you, for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. Well, don't worry, we're going to get to that. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God, or case W, abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Go back now to John 15. Verses 6, under verse 12. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Now, go back to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. A well-worn, well-used set of scriptures, this is. Now we will be reading verses 24 in 1 John chapter 2, verses 24 on to verse 29. Don't worry about what we skipped there. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay? Wait for it. 1 John chapter 2, verses 24 and verse 29. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. We're going to see a lot of corresponding verses to show that Jesus Christ is the Father, so wait for it. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not being ashamed before him at his coming. At his coming. There are parts of 1 John that are pertinent for us today in the time of the Gentiles, but there is also quite a bit that is pertinent for the time of Jacob's trouble. 
Remember, this is primarily for a Jewish audience. You need to remember that. This, First John. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Verse 29. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. And that's referring to the Holy Ghost, which I address in an, uh, an old video, an older video. Okay? So, now go back to John 15, verses 15 on to verse 17 now. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Psalm 119, Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. What do you mean, Mem? The little uh, Hebrew heading before the um, brackets of Scripture here. Psalm 119, Mem, otherwise, verses 97 on to verse 104. Okay? Go there, of course. Psalm 119, verses 97 on to verse 104. Mem. Do you, do you see that? Do you see that? Where it says Mem? Doesn't your scriptures have that in there? Okay. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments has, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Henceforth, uh, back in John 15, verse 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That's not talking about Calvinism either. But, silly. That ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 through 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. And who is that? Lucifer. That old serpent, the devil, Satan. 
and his Jesuits are the strong arm that's ruling pretty much everything today. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we, ha we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, not for salvation. Have you just read the text? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And incidentally, if you're going to pick out we should Get saved. That's all I got to say to that. That's all I got to say to that. Okay? Back now to John 15. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now, 1 Corinthians, oh wait, let's read verse 17 again. These things I command you, that ye love one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, you're going to notice something when we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to read the whole chapter. Charity is self-sacrifice. Love, well, charity is the greater expression of love. Charity is correct here in the text of the authorized version of the scriptures. Other perversions of the scriptures like to put in love. It's charity. Brother Brian did a wonderful video a long time ago on that. Go check that out. Charity is the right word used here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because charity is an outpouring of love. And there are those of you out there of the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, who are so charitable who are self-sacrificing for the body, for your brothers and sisters. And there are many of us that can learn from you. You know who you are. We're going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. 
And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Sooner or later, the prophecies are going to be fulfilled. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is per perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away when we reach the fullness of the measure of Christ at the resurrection catching away the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble <laughs> some of you my enemies when I was a child I spake as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child. I'm not saying. But when I became a man, I put away childish, childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. But now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. And those wicked masons have robbed that from scripture and tried to make it their own. There's a local mason's lodge here in town, of course, um, that has faith, hope, and charity. I even recently picked up a Masonic uh, little book for a quarter of the Eastern Star. Oh, Masons, controlled by the Jesuits. And while we are in, while we, uh, not while we are in, go to now Romans 13. Romans 13. Romans 13, verses 8 through 10. Hold your place there in Romans 13. John 15. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 and 10. 8 through 10, excuse me, 8 through 10. Romans 13, verses 8 through 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Don't be in debt. Don't be into a death pledge, a mortgage, paying off a loan to a bank. Why do you think we struggled so much? <laughs> Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. And here's one that is removed out of a majority of the Roman Catholic Bible perversions. Bible perversions. Yes. They're not scripture. The authorized version, the King James scriptures are the scriptures. But... Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. 
And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Back to John chapter 15, verse 17. These things I command you that ye love one another. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, verses 18 on to verse 20. And now you're going to figure this one out. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not of God, because you are not of my sheep. That was a gross paraphrase. You go find that yourself on your own time, okay? But remember what I told you we were skipping? 1 John chapter 2. You see? 1 John chapter 2. Verses 15 on to verse 23. Verse 15 on to verse 23. Love not the world. In 1 John chapter 2. Go there, of course. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And this definitely applies for us today, as it will, of course, of course, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Of course. But for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, here's a hint. It is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. And you can see corresponding scriptures with what we just looked at within the Pauline epistles. So. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Have I not written unto you because ye, I have not written unto you, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Not because they are two different entities, because they are one and the same. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. One God. Don't know. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Chill. Just chill. Okay? Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. It's not because they are the same or one in essence. Like, what am, who am I reading? I'm not Aquinas. Um, uh, Hippo. The guy from Hippo, um, whatever his name is. The guy from Hippo, he wrote a catechism. 
I'll, 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 I'll get that later. But, um, you know, they're not one in essence or anything like that that's made up. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? One God. Verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Oh, and be quiet about, well, what about the Holy Ghost? Shh. You're, you're sidetracking there. Rabbit trailing. <laughs> See why we skipped that earlier? Okay. Now, 1 John 3, verses 13 and 15. 1 John 3, verses... 13 on verse 15. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. For those of you who like to attack me, you're not my, uh, you know, I do have disagreements with some of the brethren. Yes, I do. Especially over major doctrinal issues. Yes. But there are those out there who like to attack me. You're not my brother. You're not my brother. Your brothers are the Jesuits. And you're provincial. Or one of your provincials. You guys just run along and do your own thing and attack everybody and teach nothing. <laughs> James chapter 4, verse 4. Just one verse in James chapter 4, verse 4, obviously. James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers, adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And that holds true for us today. I'll prove it to you. Of course, guess where we're going now in the Pauline Epistles? That's right. Romans 12. One and two. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not, trans and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect of God. Eighteen on to verse twenty again. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And some of us think we're going to escape persecution. Now, let's read verses 21 and 22. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. He, oh, excuse me. 
If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. John 8, 19. John 8, 19. John 8, verse 19. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me, nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. Because the father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. Jesus Christ is the body, the Word made flesh. Uh, one second, one second, one, 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 one second. What is it? Augustine, okay? It's the Augustine can Catechism. <laughs> I had to get that. I, uh, I'm reading the Augustine Catechism, and I got some other books really cheap, really cheap, okay? But um, I got some other books. When they start talking about this Trinity nonsense, okay, it gets so confusing to me that the, the blood wants to drip out my nose. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. How hard is that? How hard is that? But there's a little bit more to it. Let's continue, okay? Where were we? Oh, John 8, 19. Now, John 9, 35 through 41. But before we read that, But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. John 9, 35 through 41. Now, the context here is the guy who was blind. Jesus healed him. They go to, he goes before the council, the Sanhedrin guys, that kind of stuff. And then he, uh, he starts talking and they boot him out. They say, who are you to preach to us? You know, you were born in sin and they kick him out. You read that backstory on your own time. Okay, you read that on your own time. We're going to catch, we're going to start in after that. Check this out. Mm, beg your pardon. John 9, verses 35, under verse 41. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he, when he had found him, he saith unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord? that I might believe on him. No, he calleth him Lord. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Uh, by the way, when Jehos say that Jesus never accept worship, Jehovah's Witnesses. I have no respect for the Jehovah's Witnesses religion. When I get to the next video, Lord willing, where I'm answering a brother's question, yeah, you'll probably see the congestion come up then. But, and he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. Now the Pharisees and all them, they thought they knew it all, they could see. But the simple people, the lowest of the low, the least of all, who believed on him, they were the ones who could see. And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Can you, can you kind of get a little arrogance out of that? Are we blind also? 41. Jesus said unto them, 
If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. But very quickly, very quickly, very quickly, you got to see this. you got to see this. This is not part of my notes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Very appropriate. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18. Go there. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Okay, uh, where, where are we? Okay, and now, John chapter 3, 18 on to 21. Sorry, I lost my place by going uh, outside my notes there. John 3, 18 on the verse 21. He that believeth, John 3, 18 on the verse 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Note the on there. Believeth on. Trusting. Where in verse 16 it's in. Believing. Trusting. Get it? Let's continue. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is going to come into play here pretty quick. That light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Like they fall asleep when you're reading scripture. They get antsy. They can't sit still. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. John chapter 15, verse 22, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. Let me ask you something. Church of the living God, and you, Christians, do you love reading this book, the Scriptures, the authorized version of the Scriptures, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures? Do you like getting rebuked, corrected, chastened? Huh? Maybe that's why some of you don't read it, because you know what the Lord's going to say to you through the Scriptures. You don't come to the light, because your deeds will be manifest. Some of you know that. And what excuse do you make? And I'm not talking about you Jesuit coadjutors. And you infiltrators, you guys don't count. Unless you repent, you're going straight to hell. But those of you who are falling away, what, what excuse are you going to give me? What excuse are you going to give? Never mind me, who am I? What excuse are you going to give the Lord? <coughs> <coughs> I've never understood that. I, I, I do with those who are infiltrators who were never saved in the first place, who say that they're going through a dry spell. No, you're not saved. But I've never understood why people who are saved of the Church of the Living God, I, I've never understood why you could go for a length of time without any without anything in the Word of God. The Scriptures. I've never understood that. That's just me. Now granted, there are some people out there who have legitimate reasons. Health issues. 
health issues. There are some brethren out there whose health issues do restrict them from actually being able to concentrate on reading God's Word. Those things happen. But when it's a choice, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But pet sins are some of you hiding. Now, <clears throat> verses 23 under verse 24. Now this is where we're going to start getting really good. He that hateth me hateth my father also. Because we are one in essence and uh that is yeah does it say that if i had not done among them the works which none other man did they had not had sin but now they both but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Well, it says, no one has seen God at any time. The soul of Jesus Christ is God, the Father. Oh, 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 wait, okay. John chapter 10, verses 22 under verse 33. John chapter 10, verses 22 under verse 23. Okay, let's refresh our memories. John chapter 15, verses 23 and 24. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. John chapter 10. Verses 22 on to verse 33. Verses 22 on to verse 33. John chapter 10. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jew. I love this verse. <laughs> and then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And up to this point, it's like, what? What more proof did you need? But I, I love this. Verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. It's like, I, 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 like, oi vey, <laughs> I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, the Father is the soul, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, God was manifest in the flesh. Okay, the Word made flesh, yes. God, the Father, was manifest in the flesh. Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Soul, God the Father. Body, 
the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, spirit, soul, and body. One guy. Okay? My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one in essence, one in nature, one in substance. I and my Father are one. One. Just one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of, the, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not. But for blasphemy, and because that, and because that thou being a man, makest thyself God in essence. <laughs> makest thyself God. Here's a little fun fact for you. You know, the Jewish people reject the Trinity, and even those of the body of Christ, the church and the living God, of the Jewish people have a big problem with the pagan Egyptian, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic Trinity. They have a big problem with it. Some Jewish people who are of the Church of the Living God eh, might struggle with it. A majority of the Jewish people I have encountered, you believe in three gods. No, I don't. I believe in one God. Thank you very much. You believe in three. You're three God, goyish, pagan God. <coughs> goyish means of the nations, non-Jew. You would be hard-pressed to find a Jewish man or woman, even of the Church of the Living God, to come to terms with the Trinity. Because the Trinity is not scriptural. And when you see these bozos, whose heresy is the Trinity, Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. But let's continue this, okay? Now, where were we? we were in John 10. Now go to John 14, 1 through 14. Of course. You know we had to go here. Okay? Now, very quickly, in John 10... Verse 30, I and my Father are one. Not in essence, not in nature. One. One. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? John 14, 1 through 14. John 14, verse 1 through 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, I am, note that, I got that circled. You should do the same. There ye may be also, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay? Nobody can see the soul of the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the express image of his person, and that doesn't mean that there's one of three gods, spirit, soul, and body up there, and they're twins. <laughs> or just an old divert that that's that's insane. That's insane. <clears throat> Verse 7. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. <clears throat> uh, and I, I really want to avoid um, names. Um, and Okay, I'm going to. But there are some out there who have done some really interesting gymnastics to explain this. Um, <laughs> it's very, it's plain. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, she was the Father? Well, it, it, he's just, he's one in essence. He's as good, but Jesus is not the Father. What is it? Uh, what is it? The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, and the Holy Ghost is not the Son in a triangle with the little circles thing. Let, they have it in this. This is here for another video that I'm doing today. Um, <laughs> you know that goes back to Babylonia, right? You know that, right? The Trinity thing? That goes way back to Babylon with Nimrod and Semiramis and Ninus. There, Brother Alexander, I finally remembered his name. Ninus, okay? The Trinity thing goes all the way back to Babylon. The Trinity is not of God. It is not of the Scriptures. Let's continue. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The Father in me. Hello? The Father in me. Hello? Okay? <laughs> Come on. Spirit, soul, and body. How hard is that? But no, no, see, you, you go along with this stuff. How hard is this? How hard is this? Let's continue. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father dwelleth in me, he, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The soul. <laughs> Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. According to his will, of course. That doesn't mean you ask uh, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, for a new Mercedes Benz. No, according to his will. Okay? We get this so far? Okay? Now, go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah. Of course we had to go to Isaiah. Isaiah. Chapter 42. And we haven't even gotten to verse 26 yet. Isaiah chapter 42. Verses 1 through 9. Isaiah chapter 42. Verses 1 through 9. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, and whom my soul delighteth. My soul. Spirit, soul. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And this is not talking about the nation of Israel. No. No. Guess who? The son of David. Jesus Christ. As king. That's what it means by the son of David. It's a reference unto his kingship. Which he's going to rule and reign from. In Jerusalem, when he comes back the second time. Let's continue. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth. And the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith the Lord, thus saith God the Lord. He that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it. And spirit to them that walk therein. Lord K says. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Isaiah 43, verses 10 on to verse 13. Right across the page. Isaiah 43, verses 10 on to verse 13. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Christ says, unless you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And that was, uh, what was it, Brother Brian's second video of the uh, exposing the Trinity stuff that he did, and that what set so many people off. Who can forgive sins but God alone? God the Father. Not one of three gods. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me.
who saves you? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Or Jesus Christ, that's not the Father? That, that makes no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> Let's continue. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have shewed, and I have shewed, oh, excuse me, I have declared, excuse me, and have saved, and I have shewed, when there was no strange God, little g, among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Now watch this. Yea, before the day was, I am He, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Let means to hinder. <clears throat> uh, okay, let, let, let's, let's keep going. Isaiah 44. Verses 6 through 8. Isaiah 44, verses 6 through 8. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. You ought to know where that is in Revelation. We're not going to go there. You figure it out. And I am the last. I am the first, and I am the last. And beside me there is no God. And who, as I, shall call, and shall declare it, and set it in order for me? Since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them shew unto them. Fear ye not, Neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye, ye are even my witnesses. Is there God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. One God. And he's not talking in a collective sense of three persons that make one God. That is absolute nonsense. It's one. Just one. Now, John chapter 25 and 26. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that it was written, they hated me without a cause. Very quickly, before we dive into verse 26, um, Psalm 35, 19, and you can read the context of your own time on your own time. Psalm 35, 19. You gotta see this. You gotta see this. Psalm 35, 19. Psalm 35, 19. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without cause. And of course. Psalm 69, verse 4. Psalm 69, verse 4. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head, that they would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Okay, let's... Okay. Now... Verse 26, the big one. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, the soul, the Godhead, the Spirit, soul and body, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. 
when the comforter has come. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Come on, fingers work with me. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Now, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Because before the crucifixion, they were still under the law. Okay? While Christ as king was walking on the earth, okay, those who followed him as king didn't fast because the king was there. But the law was still there. He had to fulfill the law as far as the sacrifice for payment of the sins, for our sins, for yours and mine. Okay? But after the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, the Comforter is come. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, say, which saith he, ye have heard of me, the promise of the Father. And the Lord is that Spirit. You have God the Father living within you, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit. Oh, you're going to call that blasphemy? For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When, there, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. It's to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. Okay? Now, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Pentecost means 50, by the way. And when the day of Pentecost was come, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire like as fire. Very significant. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That was the giving of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God. Okay? And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? That was it. And it was offered specifically unto the Jewish people first. Okay? And later on you see Peter, Pope Peter, using the keys, offering that unto the Jewish people. If the Jewish people at this time would have accepted the gospel and had brought that onto their religious leaders, even at this time, after the death, burial, and resurrection, and their religious leaders would have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, their God and Father, as their King. None of this probably would have transpired today up to the year 2020. But of course, it was prophesied differently. Okay, so that's kind of a moot point. But, okay, now, okay, so we see the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Unlike in other dispensations, where he could come and go, come and go, come and go. Permanent. Truly saved, born again, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Eternally secure. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. Okay?
got that? Okay. Now, but when the comforters come back in John 15, verse 26, but when the comforters come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. Now, what we looked at in Acts, show me a person, spirit, soul, and body in that. No. No. The Holy Ghost is omnipresent. Okay? And when he who will now let, will let until he be taken out of the way, I just butchered that, beg your pardon. It's the body of Christ that gets taken out. The Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, is omnipresent. Okay? This isn't rock and, rocket science here, people. This isn't rocket science. This is very simple. Okay? But, now, Matthew chapter 28 Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 on to verse 20. You're going to like this one. You're going to like this one. Okay? Matthew chapter... Come on, fingers, work with me. Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 on to verse 20. 16 on to verse 20, Matthew chapter 28. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Talking about Thomas, of course. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That's talking about the trend. Shh. Shh. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, look at verse 19. I, I did a video kind of referencing this uh, about a year ago. Okay, we're going to hit it now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, bapti baptizing them in the names of the... No. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The name, the name, only one name. Um, only one name. I, I have heard people get baptized in the name of the Father, boom, and of the Son, boom, and of the Holy Ghost. Boom. Um, something about baptism is what that video was called. Uh, I'm not going to link it in the, in this one, but... Um, I'm not questioning the lividity of your water baptism, by the way, which does not save you. Okay? It's an outward profession of an inner conversion. That's all water baptism is. Okay? But I've, I've heard of people getting baptized like that. That doesn't make your baptism, water baptism, invalid or anything. But it says, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I have never seen someone uh, baptized in the name of... Jehovah, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of the Brit Chadeshah, or whatever it's pronounced in Hebrew. Um, I've never seen that. But, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. There's one name. It's not plural. It's not plural. And there, right here, it is, whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. Okay? It may it says nothing about substance, essence, none of that nonsense. None of that. Acts chapter three. Acts chapter three. Verses 
12 on to 26, right? That is 3. Acts chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 26. Can you handle this? Acts chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 26. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly upon us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Sign. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Re <laughs> Believe ye, therefore. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Repent ye, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, before the death, burial, and resurrection whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed, singular, shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. And now also, Acts 4 10 through 12, Acts 4, 10 through 12, Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given, a man, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved.
And Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Go back now to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Within Scripture, you never see someone doing this. Prove me wrong. Show it to me. It's in the name of Jesus. one name because there is only one God it's only one God friends but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the Father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father he shall testify of me John oh wait 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 we'll get to that in a second we will get to that in a second okay Psalm 2, 10 through 12. Psalm 2. Psalm number 2. Come on, fingers work with me. Come on, come on. Psalm 2, 10 through 12. 10 through 12. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Isaiah chapter 9, of course. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 9, six through seven. Oh. Actually, you know what? Let's read. From verses 2 on to verse 7. Okay? Verses 2 on to verse 7. In Isaiah chapter 9. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warriors with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, capital W, Counselor, capital C, the Mighty God, capital G, the Everlasting Father, capital F, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, the king of the Jews, when he comes back in the second coming, he will be ruling as king in Jerusalem. Okay? And upon his kingdom to order it 
and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this but when the comforter is come whom I will send unto you from the Father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father he shall testify of me um, where is person any even implied there see the Godhead can separate itself not into persons because it is one God not three persons that make one God that is nonsense that is insane okay that is absolutely insane but go to John now John chapter 1 the very first chapter John 1 1 through 14 in the beginning was the word capital W the capital W word appears seven times in Scripture in the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Um, that, uh, not Aquinas, uh, the, you know that catechism I just showed you earlier? They, the translation that they use for this verse says, all things were made through Him. No, made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. That same came for a witness to bear witness of that, notice that, capital L, light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L light. Interesting. But was sent to bear witness of that light. Again, capital L. That was the true light, capital L. Which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, a Jew, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, Jesus Christ. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth only begotten god from god the second person of them the father was the soul we we looked God has a soul, okay? We've seen it. God has a soul. God has a soul. Go to Psalm 27 now. This portion of this a brother gave me some, uh, some time ago. I haven't forgotten about you, brother, if you see this. And uh, we, uh, myself and another brother, went over these. Now, note here in 1 John, in John chapter 1, verse 7, capital light, capital light, capital light, and capital light. Four times 
the capital L light. Psalm 27, not Proverbs, Brad. Psalm 27. Now we have already read how in John chapter 3, how the light exposes darkness, okay? That was a gross paraphrase. Yes, it was very gross, okay? But Psalm 27, if my fingers would work with me and cooperate with me, okay? Okay. Psalm 27, one verse, the first verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 36, verse 9. Psalm 36, 36, verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life, and in thy light we shall see light. And Psalm 44, verse 6. Oh, wait a minute. Well, I might have I ha I might have that one messed up. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Yeah, okay, I have that one messed up. Sorry about that one, brethren. But go now to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 on to verse 17. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 on to verse 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness, witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Verses 26 and verse 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself, some make a big to-do about itself. Itself, no, because it's not a person, which has a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not three persons that make one God. Okay? It is one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And the Lord is that spirit. But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Isaiah 1. Chapter 14, uh, Isaiah 1, 14. Isaiah 1, 14. Come on. Isaiah 1, 14. Are you there? Again? More proof that God has a soul? Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me, and I am weary to bear them. And go now to John 8. John chapter 8. Come on. John chapter 8, verse 12.
Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And 9, 5, John 9, 5, John 9, verse 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I am God the Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. And of course, Revelation chapter 22, or 21, excuse me. Revelation 21, verses 22 under verse 23. <laughs> Revelation 21 verses 22 under verse 23. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the Lamb is the light thereof. One light. Because there is only one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. But when the Comforter of John 15, verse 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. You know something, brethren? When you look into early so-called church history, one of the things that Catholicism first started to do was teach the three-person trinity from way back when, for centuries, literally thousands of years. The trinity, the three-person making one God, um, has been ingrained in so much of religion. That's not a justification. Uh, there are those way back of, antiqui of antiquity that did teach the Godhead a right. Uh, I want to stay Stephanus, but that is not accurate. Brother Brian had made a video mentioning um, of those of antiquity that did. But you got to remember, the Roman Catholic Church persecuted that guy who did that and those who did and killed them and their writings that they wrote about the Godhead that is given to us in the authorized version of the scriptures were destroyed. But the testimony from those who killed them gives us enough evidence to show that Brian Denlinger did not come up with this. Uh, there are so many. Everybody's you, uh, favorite YouTube Jesuit uh, and even his provincial, the one that lives in England, um, <coughs> people say that Brian Denlinger came up with this. No, he did not. You guys are attributing. I, I, I love Brian. I love Brother Brian Denlinger, but you're attributing to him a lot more than he. No. That is what is taught to you in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. But you see, it has been ingrained from the ingrained by Catholicism, mystery Babylon, this 
three-person trinity teaching, which is heresy. There are those out there of you who believe in the trinity. And I will not be too harsh to condemn because I am aware of that, especially with my studying of uh, the Reformation, which is ongoing. Um, the Trinity was defended by Luther, Calvin, Huss, Knox, Edwards. Because you got to remember, those that came, that those of the Reformation came out of Catholicism. And wanted to make Catholicism fit with the scriptures. That is what Luther did. I actually have, um, as part of my birthday gift, I have Luther's uh, small and large catechism coming to me. I also have other works um, about the theology of Luther. And I also have Calvin stuff. But anyway, they wanted to reform Catholicism to make it pertinent with scripture. So I don't blame the Trinitarian, per se, who came, who has come up in that, thinking it is right, when it is not. Again, I say unto you, Trinitarians, who may be Protestant, the Trinity is heresy. I'm sorry to break that to you. But brethren, friends, again, every single thing that Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism has wrong, everything. Oh yeah, there was a man named Jesus, a woman named Mary, an apostle named Paul, an apostle named Peter, of course, yes, all that, they got that right. Everything that these guys do wrong. They have who God is right. Really? Really? And it pains me to say this. This is not something that I can agree to disagree on. I reject the Trinity. The Trinity is not scriptural. It is evil. There is one God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost is that Spirit. And here I stand. No matter the cost. And I don't personally wish to incite headbutton, but you know what? I can't agree to disagree on who God is. I can't. I can't. I can't. If you're going to bring it up, You all know where I stand. But I cannot agree to disagree on who God is. The Trinity is pagan and satanic. There is one God according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, our Savior, our Father. And I pray you, if you are a Trinitarian and you make it this far, consider these things. Anyway, um, I'm going to take a break now because I have um, another video that I'm going to do answering a brother's question, which is why I have these, these catechisms out because I'm going to answer this. But uh, I'm going to take a break now because, um, so I love you. I really do. I hope this was beneficial. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.